Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, August 15, 2019. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. We have a lot to cover tonight. I'm going to show you a variety of different charts. We have a lot to learn. I'm going to slip in a secret or two. So that being said, don't go anywhere. The first thing we have to do is talk about the big picture. It's obvious to anybody that's looking at this chart and anybody that's been watching these videos for any period of time that the market is now teetering on having another leg lower. Does that leg low stop at 275 or lower? My opinion is we go lower. We don't have to worry about that right now. What we have to worry about right now is where the market is right now. When we get close to a bottom, You'll hear me begin to say, we're looking for a low. Right now, we're not looking for a low. However, we do need to be aware of something extremely important, very material. The market is now teetering at this bottom area, double bottom, now maybe triple bottom with today included. They're going to try and play defense. The Bulls, the PPT, meaning plunge protection team, whoever you want to believe is in control, not in control, or can control this market, whatever it is, whatever market forces, if you just want to believe like I do, it's just a market with a destiny. In between, we can determine the short-term moves, both up or down, but in the bigger picture, the destiny or destination for this market is going to be lower. But here's what we need to be aware of. You're going to have rip your face off rallies. We discuss this each and every time we get into these corrective phases. Here we are again. You're going to have rip your face off rallies that last for a few hours, a few days, one day, even a couple of weeks. We're going to have them. They will show up. They don't necessarily have to come from the bottom. It will look like a bottom, and that's the whole point. That's the intention. The intention is to suck everybody back in, thinking they just made a bottom, and then they hit them again. It's an awareness. We all have to have an awareness, for example, that we can wake up tomorrow morning and find the market right up here, no problem at all. What's the significance of that area? They would go to test the breakdown candle high if things became bullish. Why would they do that? Because that's the way markets work. They do the same thing over and over and over. We talk about it. We look at it. We discuss it again. I tell you again. It's the same routine. It never changes. Do they have to go up and test the breakdown candle high? Of course not. They can. They may, if they're headed in that direction, what we do know is under normal garden variety market conditions, that will provide at minimum of some temporary or intraday resistance. It's not exactly close by. It's about 35, 40 S&P handles away from where we finished the end of the session on Thursday. But remember, in this type of market environment, we are and will continue to see large swings in both directions. 30 S&P handles is nothing. There's a number of reasons why I want to bring that topic up about the fact that you'll see some kind of rescue attempt made in this market. It may be a news item that everybody decides to immediately turn bullish on. There'll be a rumor of a trade deal with China for the 400th time. The Fed will come out with some miracle announcement. North Korea will agree to give up all their nuclear weapons. Something will come out, it will spark a rally in the market, and depending on what type of news and how much short covering there is, they can take a little rocket ride. When you're in the middle of these corrective phases, A, those things happen all the time, and B, there are opportunities to sell the rips. That's what kind of market we're in. We're in a sell the rip market. Look for the rips. Don't be afraid of them. If you hop on board on the long side and you catch it, great. But don't be afraid to sell the rips. And you don't have to sell the rip as soon as it happens. You could see a 50, 75 point rip in the S&P that lasts a couple of days. It's absolutely possible. What's the other side of that? They just break down and collapse. 
One of the byproducts of the rip your face off rally is that they don't let you in the short side. Everybody runs to cover their shorts or try and get on the long side and then somehow, some way, they end up leaving without you. They end up going right through the trap door and you're the only one sitting there or seemingly the only one sitting there without any puts in your pocket. It's one of those environments where it's similar to the VIX. You collect the VIX in and around or under 12. Here, until further notice, until they start closing above the convergence of those moving averages, you sell the rips, however bad it feels at the time. Speaking of feeling bad at the time, I want to go over something tonight of a little bit of a secret. I've discussed this here and there before. I'm going to open up on a little something you most likely don't see many places. Now we're on an hourly chart of the SPY. Now this looks bearish. It looks like they're consolidating to break down, to break down below the lows over here on the left. That's what it looks like. That may very well happen. Ultimately, I think that will happen. But here today was one of those situations where, in my opinion, not everything is always as it seems. So I gave this one out early in the morning to Inside the Numbers members and we tracked it all day long through the event happening, what was likely to happen, and then what did happen. Now on one hand, you could say, well here they defended the double bottom area. Some traders would say they made a triple bottom, now they go up from here. Maybe so. But I was looking at something slightly different today. Here's a snapshot of the S&P E-mini futures contract, but this is the one that trades around the clock, not the pit session only chart. So you'll see some lines going across the screen, the pink lines. Those were numbers from inside the numbers also today. These are part of the important numbers section. I would be remiss if I didn't put the other ones on there. So these numbers are important and the market did respect, respond, react at these numbers at various times throughout the day. We use these numbers with everything that's taught in the Lazy E-mini Trader course and that's how we put together the intraday trades or the swing trades if a trader is using an hourly or longer term chart daily and beyond. Those can certainly be multi-day swing trades. Back to this chart, here's the situation. So at 8 o'clock this morning, this is the candle that developed. So that big breakup candle was all of a sudden something that jumped out at me from the screen. So I had my eye on this all day. Now normally speaking, I only use a pit session chart, period, full stop. But there are times when something will stand out at me and I certainly gave it everything that I was seeing to inside the numbers members today all day long because I was watching this, tracking this, and here was the concept. The concept was if they're going to go down and test the lower portion of that breakup candle, it was simply either going to hold or it was not going to hold. Anybody that would be classified as an aggressive trader, and there are many out there, I know, because I got the emails, they bought that price level down there, and they made a lot of money on the reaction from down there. Yours truly was not a participant down there. Why didn't I take that trade down there? Well, there's actually two reasons why. One has to do with the fact that it wasn't the pit session chart and I was not really 100% sure. I was giving the price levels. Here was the story. If it didn't hold, it didn't hold. But it is somewhat of a discrepancy on the charts. I don't like to use the continuous contract or the Globex session contract, electronic session contract, whatever you want to call it. I don't like to use it together with the piss session chart. It just doesn't feel right all the time. However, I do use it for informational purposes, I use it to derive numbers, I use it for a lot of reasons, but in a case like today, I wasn't 100% sure that that was actually going to work. And I let Inside the Numbers members know that. I said I would not be a participant at that price. Doesn't mean it won't work, I just wasn't planning on it. What was the second reason? The second reason was because I was already in the money for the day, we had a profitable trade in Tilray early this morning, and I didn't want to give anything back. I wanted to keep the money in my pocket. It's a business. I run it as a business. 
Sometimes I just don't want to take the trade, period, full stop. You're wondering, here's the Tilray trade. The price level posted for inside the numbers members was 3575 It worked, but then it fell back down. It made a high of about 3660 but it came back down, and it really just centered around that 3575 give or take area for a while, and then it actually fell away towards the end of the day. But you can see, once again, here we go again, important numbers. These numbers are meaningful to this chart. And by the way, I'm aware that not many traders took trades early today with the market doing what it was doing. It is a rodeo, and traders have to be careful. Sometimes the best play is no play. Cash is, in fact, a position, and you don't have to participate if you're not comfortable. If the market's too volatile for you today or yesterday or whatever day it may be, then just keep your money in your pocket be an observer and take the opportunity to learn from what goes on. By the way, I do want to make mention of one other thing, and this goes back to the rip your face off rallies. There's another reason why we have the rip your face off rallies, and they come from short covering and then buying begets buying. We know all that stuff, but there's an underlying reason. It's the trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew's opportunity for torture. We all know that to be the case. I just wanted to make mention and remind everybody that's the main reason. Staying on the E-mini contract, here's a 30-minute chart so you can see what I was looking at. First, we had a bull flag pattern developing, and we know what happens here. We know about the risk, and look, all of a sudden, here we go starting to run down to test the low of the breakup candle. So all of a sudden, if a trader is looking for the breakup to happen, they shake you out. They don't let you have it. That's the way the market works. And where do they go? Right down to 28.35. You don't know at the time they're going to stop at 28.35 when the market's moving that fast. That's the issue. Having the numbers is one thing. Having the guts to take the trade in a fast-moving, highly volatile market is something different. If you're taking a trade close to risk, then the story flips again back in your favor. So if you're taking a trade down near the breakup candle low, down around 28.30, 28.28 and change, which is the exact number that I provided to Inside the Numbers members. What they knew was A, why the number was important, where it came from, and B, where they were wrong. Why is all that extra important? Because if you have an understanding of where the number comes from and why it's important, you have a different type of comfort level or lack of stress level in the trade. You're not staring at price hoping it goes in your favor. You're looking at the market watching for it to do a certain type of move, type of pattern, or stay above or below a certain number. And if that doesn't happen, you know your exit plan. Here's food for thought. Most people don't find success in the market, not for the reasons that many people believe. There's thousands of reasons. But in my mind, one of the underlying philosophical reasons is this. They lose the race while trying to figure the market out and make money in the market, they lose the race to figure out how the market really works. They end up blowing up their account, running out of money before they actually learn how the market really works. That's what really happens. This much I can guarantee you. If you started today, no money, just stare at charts for years on end. Write everything down you see. Keep some kind of a log record. Organize the data, fast forward 10 years, and you'll know everything I know and more. The problem is, A, many people aren't going to do that, and B, most people enter the market trying to trade their own capital immediately. It's like going into the automotive manufacturing business tomorrow with everything I have invested. Why would I do that? I don't know anything about it. That's the separation between running this as a business or a gambling casino. Camp IWM, my favorite market leading indicator. Anything to see here? What we did see here today was relative weakness. Also noted for inside the numbers members. But relative weakness against the SPY. The spider was actually up today. The S&P cash index finished up 7 points or 1 quarter of 1%. But yet the IWM was down one third of a percent. This is an ugly chart. 
I'm not saying we won't get a rip your face off rally within the next day or so. Any way you want to look at it, the market is going lower. It's just a matter of whether or not we get a rip your face off rally sooner than later and from where it comes from. That's it. Period. Full stop. And remember, during the rip your face off rally, if you're short the market, it's going to feel like you're really, really wrong, but you know the routine. As soon as you sell the position, the market turns around. That's because they got you maximum emotional overdrive. Therein lies the reason why traders, investors will sell at lows and buy at highs. Nothing we didn't know before. Taking a stop down at the transportation department, is there anything different to see here than the IWM? No, same routine. They may defend this particular area down here for a while. They may not. Either way, this market is poised to go lower. May have you rip your face off rally first. We don't know what we're going to wake up to every single morning. I say that every single night because it's the truth. One morning, you're going to wake up and the S&P is going to be up 50 handles, 60 handles. That's just the way it's going to work. Conversely, you're going to wake up and it's going to be down 50, 60, 70 handles, both directions. Anything different in the NASDAQ market, the triple Qs? No, same routine, same story. I'm not going to repeat the performance. It's just not necessary. I have the same thought process when this chart comes up that I did when the others come up. They don't look the same, but this one looks equally as bad. Certainly, they could defend this bottom area. The question will become, can they? What is the underlying larger magnitude of force that's pulling this market? What is driving the bus? XLF. We talk about this one all the time. And I want to reiterate something that's extremely, extremely important. The XLF was up a little bit today, but look at this chart. Look how fast this thing fell. Remember what we say all the time, the financials, without the financials on the upside or the downside, it's unlikely that the financials or the market are going to get unlinked for any period of time. It's unlikely the market, meaning the stock market, will get very far in one direction or the other without the financial participation. It goes back to the same thing that we also discuss all the time. It's all the same market in the end. Not to the same magnitude every single day, but for the most part, all the markets trade together. SMH, same routine, same story, let's move it along. I have something better to discuss when we get over to the bond market. I get a lot of requests to cover gold, and let me just reiterate the reason why I don't cover it every night is because it's in a long-term breakout. There's nothing to cover. It's going to go up. It's going to go down, but you can be either long gold for the long term or you can trade it for the short term. I'm not interested in trading it for the short term, so I don't want to take up the time within this video on gold. That's the only reason if it becomes a tradable vehicle, that's a different story. My story is long-term bullish in gold, very long-term. It's going to go up, it's going to go down, long-term bullish breakout. That's it, period, full stop. TLT, this is the 20-year-plus bond representation. So the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because we're going to look at a different chart in a moment, but I want to talk bonds for a second. Interest rates are in the gutter. Bonds are obviously screaming higher. This is in the redonkulous category. But here's the story. We know it's going to reverse. We don't necessarily know from exactly what price. But here's the deal. Here's a picture of the hourly chart. You have a tail candle. You have a high. You have something to trade against. You may be putting in some kind of a retracement, maybe halfway, maybe more, up that tail candle. Here's the way you look at it. Any close, hourly close above that tail candle, the trade is wrong. You have to reevaluate it. Give it another try another time. But here's what I will say. If you're a long-term trader, and I mean long-term. I don't mean two weeks. I don't mean two months. I mean long-term trader. You have to be willing to look into the future. The bond prices will come down. They will come down furiously over time. I don't know exactly where the top is, but we're not that far from the top. Look where interest rates are. Here's the 30-year yield. This is the hourly chart. We go to the daily chart. You can see maybe yields are trying to put in a bottom. We don't know exactly yet, 
but take a look at it, take a step back and take a look at it from the big picture perspective. 30-year yields under 2%. 10-year yield about 1.5%. Certainly, yields can come lower. I'm aware of that. How much lower and for how long are they going to stay down there is really what my point is. Frankly, I don't even care how low they go. I just know they're not going to stay down there for very, very long. It's a very similar conversation to the VIX. I'm collecting long-term short positions in the bond market. It's a process. It's a project. I'm prepared to be wrong, and I'm prepared to be wrong for a while. I could be wrong for several months. It's a project. And with that, I am going to give it a wrap here tonight and pull the ripcord. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.